Hey guys, JPA Trades here, and as promised, going to be going over some unusual whales tools we use for the due diligence posts, as well as there's been a lot of questions lately with the uh, daily flow that I post. So rather than answer it every day back and forth, I thought this would be a good little educational material, quick little reference guide. So let's get to it. So starting out, all this comes from the unusual whales website. Uh, really great tool. I use it every day. Just Check the flow, check where things are going. I like to do it after hours to write the due diligence post just to kind of do some research, see where the flow is going, see where the money is going to help judge my decisions and help assist in my trades. So once you're in there, the tool that I like the most is the intraday analyst. And we're going to go over AMD for it just to kind of show you what tools are there. It just kind of ties back into what I'm posting. So when I'm posting the most active change, most active means highest volume. So you can see like on 3.4, they ended up going down to a penny, but they are from a penny to 3.50 right here. So most active changes the volume. That's where the cash is going in and out of during the day. That's kind of a good indication of where the money wants to go. And it's a lot more powerful on like a Monday or so, or even a Tuesday, Wednesday. Fridays, you tend to get a little bit of these expiration ones, but you can notice right away here, 311 120 calls we're getting some action so i might want to take a look at those and then the next week where's another 311 115 so into the next week's calls you start to see that there is some volume coming up and more bullish bets and you can see what the biggest options trades are so there was people buying 105 puts on the fourth so keep that in mind and then it does like a little tag so bearish tag is attached to the trade based on the relationship between the call put if it's the bid side or the ask side so if someone's buying the ask of a put it's bearish if someone's selling the ask of a put selling the bid of a put it's bullish so here's an example here of where it was a sell of the put but it's bullish because they're just selling the premium where you want to what you like to see is like bullish call so they're buying the ask on these 115s which is always good change with the highest remaining OI so we see that there's a lot of bets out there for the monthly 130s and the 414s so this is a quick little reference tool I like to use and I'll post it in there a lot some of these biggest option trade trades the highest, highest OI dark pool is always a really useful tool because you can kind of see where these big price points are and you can use them as pivots and they kind of line up with our pivots that I'll post pretty well so like here's some dark pool action at 112 108 118, 113.83. So kind of if you average it out there, it starts to get to like that 115 area, but you can use these as extra pivots during the day. And obviously the bigger the volume, the stronger the pivot. So here's 115, huge dark pull volume. So you know it's pretty strong. Or this weakest one out here, this 123.6, not a ton of dark pull volume there. So you know that that pivot's not really that strong. So another thing that you like to do, and I like to do, is look at the highest OI changes. So 1,800% increase in the 318.127 call. So that's kind of interesting. So it went from 1.1K up to 22K. So when you see the open interest changing, it means someone's making a bet on things because they think it's going to happen. And you'll notice this too if I do like TTD. TTD doesn't always have a ton of volume in it, but it's always a good mover. So there might be someone who really knows something about AMD going on, or they might have a good indication, and they're getting that volume in first before something else starts to happen. And here it is by percents. You want to kind of filter out. So here's one that went from 1 to 80. That one's not too relevant, but here's that 127 again, 1.1 22K. So you got to use a little bit. Don't just look into it and say, oh, my God, an 8,000% increase. Here's a good one. You want to kind of do just a quick, Quick glance, don't go too quick. Say, okay, here was 1.1K to 22K. That's something valid. These other ones, I would ignore those data points. OI decreases. So these are all pretty relevant. So nothing really wrong with any of those. The 30,000, 33,000 to 30,000, that's a pretty big change. Decrease by percentage. So all of these, not relevant. I'd throw those out. Here's some volume comparisons, but I like to look at these increase by just count percentages, decrease by count of percentages to see if anything's jumping off the page at me. I do like the 120s. So highest increase, I like this 127 increase for the 11th. Definitely something to keep in mind considering it was only 108. 
So always good to watch that there. And then another tool that I've been liking a lot lately. I always skip it. I like the update to unusual whales. I just got to use it. Max Payne. So Max Payne's a really useful tool because that's where the market makers make the most money is if on Friday it gets to that point. So on Friday, if it gets to 116, the market makers most the, make the most premium. So there's a higher volume, all this volume and all this value of puts and calls. Obviously, a 230 call is not worth very much. And obviously, a what's it called? 55 puts not worth very much. But the max pain point where the market makers get to take in the most premium, make the most money, let retail and everyone else lose all their cash is right at 116. So if AMD, so AMD is 108, let's say you had those 115 calls, it gets to 115, 116 is probably a good idea to start selling because they're going to want to work it back towards that price point so they don't lose the house on AMD. And this works really well, I've found on SPY. And I'm not a huge SPY trader, just simply because I don't like to put a ton of money in for a daily or one day to expiry call. I like the zero DTs just to be fun with it, but to do them every day. I mean, there's people that are really good at it. I prefer to kind of use a little bit larger capital and hold for bigger moves where you can get those big intraday moves with SPY, but it's a little bit harder for me to want to hold and put my capital in there. So let this load. So here you can do every two days for the daily expiring SPY. So here's the Monday options. So it's likely for, they're going to want SPY to be around 437. Same thing, check for 39, 435. And then let's see what Friday the 11th is, 435. So it makes me feel like we're going to say, I tweeted out SPY due diligence already about how it's been kind of bouncing around the bottom of the range, the top of the range. So it keeps doing the same range bound. Market makers are going to make all this money and all this premium that people are buying, guessing to sort out. And that's what's really useful about this Max Payne and the intraday analyst tool and all of you in usual ways in general is it kind of gives you a hint on what's going to happen. It's never going to be, oh, this flow came in, I need to do it right away. But it helps you make your decision making process to either confirm what you're thinking or make you go back and say hey maybe I should take another look at this thing maybe there's a detail I'm missing maybe there's something I can find through the tools and there's tons of great tools like the dark pool and like live flow you can go through and just kind of set whatever filters you want like I had it on TTD last just see what's going on set your filters to anything so set your filters I don't know Usually anything other than 10,000 you don't really care about. 25,000 is a pretty good spot. And just kind of see what the money's going through. See what they're buying. This is more of a detailed view. So if you were in the, your intraday analyst, so let's go back there. And you wanted to look up like, hey, what exactly happened with this OI increase? So you could go and look up that 100 call in your flow and sort out what's going on. And then another big question a lot of people had is from the app. So here's an old tweet. So I post these pictures all the time from the usual oil app. Say, hey, here's the flow breakdown for whatever ticker. Here's Lucid. So you saw there's 65% put premium, but it's 49.5% call volume. And then the total net premium is 7.8 and 7.2. And everyone says, hey, well, what does that mean? Kind of, can you give me a little bit more details? So here's what, how, is, how we're going to do it. So first rows is the total number of dollars and calls or puts traded. And that's all on the right right here. So I'll leave it up so you guys can reference this. So much more dollars and puts are being traded. Second row is the just total number. So 55,000 calls were exchanged, 56,000 puts were exchanged. So the puts were a little bit more valuable than the calls monetarily. And third row is if it's lean, bullish, or bearish. So while you might look at, hey, there's all these puts being sold or puts being exchanged, it was actually bullish because the puts were being sold. So that's where that bear indication happened. So if puts are being sold, it might not mean the stock's going to go up, but it might mean it's near the bottom. So when you start to see those puts being sold, sometimes it's the indication of, hey, 
here's where bottoming out is going to start to happen because they're going to start selling this premium at a really high value and start making it up. Then eventually you'll start to see that call premium uptick, the call volume uptick, and the call premium. So you want all three to be leaning the direction you want to kind of have that really good confirmation. So this would have been like 60% bear across the board. You could have pretty much banked on it keep going down or 60% bull across the board. You can pretty much bank on it keep going up. But I like this tool and that's why I posted at lunchtime. So it's a really quick reference. It's just a, hey, what's it looking like right now? What's a good indication of what I want to do? Because during the day, you kind of need a quick tools, quick reference guides. But then at night, you can be more methodical with it. So at night, I like to use the website. I like to use the intraday analyst tool to really do that deep dive, do that due diligence on what I want to see. And then during the day, I love using the app. Just do those quick reference point, quick checks on where the market's going and how it's going to work out. So I hope this video helps you guys. I hope you good rest of the next week. Uh, thanks to over 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. That's awesome. And uh, 